Hi everyone, welcome to Ham Cured Smoke and episode number 8 in the ICOM 7300 from A to Z series. We're going to be going out of order again. We're going to go through section 18 of the manual, connector information this time. I've got a specific reason for this. In the previous episodes, any audio that you heard from the radio was just what was being picked up from my microphone. It was kind of in the background and not too easy to hear, and I apologize for that. As we go through section 4, there are a lot of filters, functions, and other settings that are going to have a significant impact on how the audio sounds. And I want you to be able to hear the differences as I'm going through those things. So I'm going to be using the accessory connector on the back of the radio to connect audio out of the 7300 into a mixer along with my microphone so I can get the best possible audio quality from the rig. As long as I'm doing that, I might as well show you how I'm going to connect it, and I'll go through the rest of the connectors too. Let's get to it. First, let me apologize in advance if this episode is a little bit disjointed. I'm on the road for work this week. I had to record a bunch of short video clips before I left. Hopefully they'll all go together in the order that I was planning. ICOM thoughtfully included several connectors with the radio. First, there's the accessory connector, and it comes pre-wired with a pigtail. We'll go through the color codes on this in a few minutes and show you which ones we're going to use. And then, they also included a connector to connect your key, a straight key or a paddle. And then, finally, they included the connector for the uh, CIV control. Uh, this is the little eighth inch mini plug if you want to control the radio not through the USB port. All right, so here's the back of my rig. I've tried to not disconnect too many things. Of course, here's the antenna cable at the PL259 connector. I've got a ground. I'm using a braided ground. Of course, the power cable. And then I'm using an external tuner with mine because my end fed antenna won't quite tune with the internal tuner. And then these two are if you're using a linear amplifier that's not an ICOM linear amplifier. This is the ALC automatic limiting control. This comes out of the amp, goes into the radio, and then there's the send control. This is what comes out of the radio to key the amplifier. And then this is where you connect your CW key. That's this connector that ICOM has provided if you want to wire up your own to a straight key or a paddle. And then this is the accessory jack that we're going to be using this connector with, and I'm going to be getting the audio out of the radio for that. And then there's the cat control jack. I've skipped the USB for the moment. The cat control jack here, that's this connector that comes with the radio. And then, of course, the USB for controlling the radio with uh, a USB connection and it also has the audio interface built in. And then finally the speaker. And all of these are printed right on the back for easy reference. So let's take a look at the book. We're going to use the accessory socket to get audio out of the radio. But first, let's just take a quick look at all the options you have for getting audio out of the ICOM 7300. The 7300 actually provides six different ways to get audio out of the radio. Of course, there's the built-in speaker. And then on the front panel, there's the headphone jack. And then there's also the microphone jack, which includes a pin for audio out as well as audio in. On the back of the radio, we've got the external speaker jack. We have the USB connector, which includes the radio's built-in audio interface. And then finally, the accessory socket, which we're going to be using for this project. Let's take a closer look at the accessory socket. As you can see from all the pins, this socket provides access to a lot of the radio's functions and features. We could easily spend at least an entire segment just going over this connector. And we'll probably do that in a future episode, but for now, we're just going to take a look at the audio connections. 
I'm going to use the pigtail connector that came with the radio. So I'm going to need pin 2 for ground, and that's a red wire. I'm not too crazy about the fact that they chose a red wire for this since ground is typically either black or green. And then I need pin 12. That's the light blue wire. This pin provides AF, that's audio frequency, or IF, that's intermediate frequency output. We'll go through the details of how you pick which one you want and how you set that up in the next episode once I've got the cable made and we're setting up the radio with the menu functions. The nice thing about the audio that comes out of this pin is that it's at a fixed level regardless of what the volume control is set to. So if you're going to use it for recording, as I am, or if you're going to interface it to some other piece of equipment, you don't have to worry about the volume control knob messing up any of your settings. So the only thing left to do is to make a cable. I was going to show you a schematic, but it's actually pretty simple. I'm just going to connect the ground and the audio out to a quarter inch phone plug, which is the connector I need for the line input on my mixer. That's about all I can cover this time. Please be sure to tune in next time and we'll take a look at, or rather listen to, some of the things that this radio can do. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke.